Thank you everyone for taking the time to join us for Discover the Benefits of the Top All-in-One Front Counter Teller Capture Solutions. Today we will have Unilink's product and sales consultant, Lou Fuchs, start out by sharing the benefits of teller capture as well as a little bit about Unilink and what we do. Then we will pass the presentation to a product specialist from Digital Check, Canon, Burroughs, Panini, and Epson to present the latest technology each manufacturer is currently offering. We will also have a $20 Dunkin' Donuts gift card giveaway for a lucky attendee who stays with us until the end of the webinar. If anyone has any questions at any time, feel free to type them into the chat box. We will answer a few of them at the end, and the remaining we will gather the written answers and distribute to all attendees via email afterwards. Now, let's go ahead and pass the presentation off to Lou. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you, everyone, for attending the uh, presentation today on Front Counter Capture. Also, thanks to uh, the manufacturers for participating and making their presentations today. Uh, I wanted to let you know, first of all, uh, we have numerous white papers available on Front Counter Teller Capture. If you would like for us to send you the uh, industry white papers that we have, just email uh, as part of this presentation. Yes, we want the white papers, and we'll send you the white papers on Front Counter Teller Capture. I wanted to highlight briefly uh, some of the reasons why financial institutions do go to Front Counter Capture. One of the biggest reasons is the balancing at the point of transaction. Uh, we had numerous conversations over the years with uh, financial institutions that went from back counter capture to front counter capture, and one of the biggest uh, benefits of front counter capture is that you uh, balance at the point of transaction, and uh, what that means for the uh, financial organization is they don't have to spend numerous hours, expensive time for their item processing center and their operations people to get involved in balancing at the branch level. I also wanted to mention to you uh, a couple of other things that we've experienced in the industry. I had an example where a customer in the Midwest with about 125 branches said we don't want to do back counter, I'm sorry, rather we don't want to do front counter capture. We're happy with back counter capture. Uh, but then the top 10 bank in the country across the street offered front counter capture and they got many comments from customers asking them why they didn't offer the latest technology, which got customers through the process much quicker, and they uh, determined that they should go to front counter capture. It's been a fantastic experience for them, and it improved the morale in the branches. The equipment itself is small in nature, small footprint. I know that many of you are using, for example, uh, older impact receipt printers uh, for many manufacturers. One brief example might be the Epson TMU-375, which in its day was a wonderful printer, but by today's standards is old, loud, clunky, and uh, unreliable. And moving to a thermal type printer, it gives you the ability to uh, print off marketing messages in a clean format and give them to your customer. Two brief examples. If you had a branch in an affluent area, you could give your customer a marketing message that said, uh, please stop in and see our Wealth Management Division for uh, information on your retirement plan. Or if you had a branch next to a college or university, you could send a marketing message out to them in regards to an auto or student loan. These thermal printers also have the ability to print off QR2 codes, as the uh, vendors will mention to you. What that means is that you can scan the information and tie it into things like your database. Um, other things that uh, are obvious to all of us is reduced float. Um, if you get your money quicker and your customer gets their money quicker, which they will with front counter capture, uh, it increases your level of customer service. A few things about Unilink as you're thinking about front counter capture. Unilink has participated in all phases of project management for over 200 financial institutions that have moved to front counter capture. Our first experience was almost 10 years ago with a financial institution in the Northeast who at that point in time had 15 branches and wanted to go to fund counter capture. That particular financial institution has grown up to over 400 branches. Every step of the way we've participated, uh, for example, supplying them with over 2,500 scanners, over 5,000 printers, done all their service work for them, and supplied them with all their consumable parts and supplies. 
However, we want you to know that whether you're a large financial institution or a small financial institution, everybody is equally important to us. And we do have financial institutions with one or two branches that have gone to front counter capture with us assisting them. As part of the process, uh, we will be your consultant and make recommendations uh, based upon your particular requirements in terms of what you think might be the best fit for you. So as the uh, vendors present their products today, please know that it's very normal as you're testing equipment for us to provide you with the test equipment and go through the pros and cons of all the equipment that you test so that you can make an informed decision and that's part of our process with you. The service aspect of uh, front counter capture is critically important and no two customers are alike. Let me give you a couple of examples. Customer A wants to do all the service and preventative maintenance work on the front end themselves as best as they can. For those types of customers, what we do is we educate them either by training the trainer or training the branches themselves on how to do preventative maintenance to keep downtime to a minimum. And uh, we do webinars for every one of our customers that request it or we proactively present it to them in any format that is amicable for the customer. Customer B might be a customer that does not want to participate in the service business at all. For that type of customer, we would have a next day advance exchange or a replacement exchange or a spare depot exchange program available for them. As part of the process, we also have a state-of-the-art delivery system for online ordering of consumable parts and supplies. We have customers that go online and the consumable parts and supplies uh, ship to the operations center or central ops. And we have many, many customers where the branches go online and order all the parts uh, individually. One of the important things to know about Unilink is we do have the broadest portfolio of products in the industry. What does that mean to you? What that means to you is we have great expertise in all the products that are used in the branches. It's very normal for our customers to, first of all, done back counter capture with us then possibly gone to front counter capture using Unilink as their fulfillment partner. And we're actively participating with them and assisting them in things like electronic signature pads, photo ID scanners, document <coughs> scanners, currency counters, et cetera. So please know that uh, Unilink is your committed fulfillment partner for all aspects of table hardware that you require. At this point, I would like to um, introduce the uh, manufacturers to you. The order that we're going to be taking for the presentations is Digital Check, Canon, Burroughs, Panini, and Epson. All five of these vendors are trusted business partners of Unilink. With all five vendors, we've done numerous front counter installations. They are all world-class, best-of-breed vendors who we have a terrific relationship with. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Mike Donovan from Digital Check. Great. Thank you, Lou. And thank, thank Unilink for providing the forum for us to share some information. We certainly thank the attendees for their time today. Uh, my name is Mike Donovan. I am the Vice President of Sales in the uh, North American region for Digital Check. If you, want, if you want to move to the next slide. And what I wanted to cover with you today from a, from a high level is a little bit about Digital Check so you understand us a little bit better as an organization, but more importantly, spend some time talking about our Teller Solutions, the TS500 and our TS240 scanners. And finally, give you a little food for thought, some additional considerations that you um, you might look at as you're contemplating what a um, you know an optimal teller environment uh, solution may be for you. Um, if you want to move to the next slide, so Digital Check is a U.S. based, a U.S. owned, and a privately held company. Uh, our corporate headquarters is in Chicago. Our manufacturing facility and engineering facility, it's the same campus, is in California. We invite anyone that's considering uh, Teller, if you'd like to come tour our facility, see how the scanners are made, see what kind of quality assurance testing they must go through before they, they earn a serial number, we welcome that. And um, we appreciate it's a strategic initiative to keep those jobs in the U.S., and that's important to us. Uh, finally, we have our software division that's located in Dallas. And what this means is, Digital Check owns every aspect of the development, manufacture, distribution, and service of our scanners. And we think that's important. We think that allows us to 
have higher quality control over the scanners, and more importantly, um, a better customer experience. Um, also, once you deploy Teller, uh, I don't know what challenge you're going to have during that deployment. I just know, I've been through enough of these, I just know you're going to have one. And I guess what I do know won't be anything I've ever seen before. Um, but um, that's going to happen, and I think reaction is more important. And to have all of our resources here in the United States to be able to react and work with your solution provider to understand if that's something that's on the hardware side, on the software side, happened during the rollout, um, it, to be nimble like that should be an important consideration for you. Our manufacturing facility um, based out of California is, is solely dedicated to manufacturing digital check scanners, but just its legacy was in manufacturing high-end optical equipment for the likes of Jet Propulsion Laboratories and NASA and 3M and Kodak, just a, a very good legacy now that they are manufacturing high-end optical equipment for our scanners. Next slide. The TS-500 is our sixth generation scanner. And if you want to go ahead and move to the next slide, that's fine as well. What I'd like to do is, again, at a very high level, go through the features and functionality of the TS-500. Um, the first and one of the most important is this, this, uh, the scanner's job is to move paper. It has to image it, but it has to get that paper through the path. And um, one of the issues you run into with uh, scanning or can run into is poor paper feeding, poor paper getting through the path. We've addressed that with several different technologies with our TS-500. Uh, we have a retractable entry pocket plunger that goes to put the right amount of tension depending on how many checks you put in that entry pocket so that it'll feed properly. We've got a very quiet belt-driven system that'll move that paper along the paper path until it gets to the exit pocket where we're utilizing textured rollers to kick that check out and keep them in sequence in the exit pocket. Additionally, we have an optional feature called AccuTrack Plus. This is an enhanced feed system which will bottom justify and front justify checks that are offset when they enter that entry pocket, sometimes due to poor jogging. Um, this manages that to further reduce any uh, misfeeds that would be attributable to, again, offset checks that get into the entry pocket. Next slide. My favorite subject, cleaning. This is, this is the bane of our industry, and I probably speak for, for most of the manufacturers here when I say most of the units we get back for service, and I'm sure Unilink sees this all the time as well, simply needed to be cleaned. Uh, cleaning requires human intervention, and there within lies the flaw. Um, <laughs> They are, uh, it's not a toaster where you take it out, you plug it in, and you just use it. It does need a proactive cleaning schedule. There's quite a bit of ink and debris that can be picked up by the rollers that uh, on those checks. And what we found is um, operators just don't really do a very good job of it, and it causes service issues for you down the road. So with the TS-500, we tried to make it as simple as possible. First and foremost, we have a built-in cleaning indicator light. So this is a check engine light. It just indicates visually to the operator that, hey, it's time for the scanner to be cleaned, as opposed to them guessing and when it should be cleaned. And the scanner will work fine while that light is on, but it will not go off until they've performed a cleaning cycle on that. And by cleaning cycle, you can initiate a cleaning cycle from the scanner itself. This is separate and independent from the image capture platform software, so you don't need to run a dummy batch and then void it in order to get the, the rollers moving so that you can properly clean it. This is independent of that. And all an operator needs to do is simply place a cleaning card into the entry pocket. The scanner will do the rest from there. It will hold that, uh, it will hold that card against the roller so that they scrub properly and then send it into the exit pocket and that process goes on for three or four times. So what we've tried to do is take the number one issue in the industry and automate it and make it as easy as possible. If you want to move to the next slide. Some additional features that you'll find with the TS-500 is there is an ID scanner. That's standard equipment on the TS-500. You, uh, you, you input the ID card in the front of the scanner. It will scan it and return it to the front of the scanner, so you do not need to reach behind the scanner in order to insert it or remove that ID scanner. We have a pull-out reference card. Seems like a simple enough thing. 
Um, but there are lights on the scanners that, depending on the color of the light or possibly a sequence of blinking, can tell you what state the scanner is in. Rather than have to go to a manual or look it up, we've added a nice reference card that is retractable underneath the scanner to quickly give the operator an idea of what state that scanner is in. And we've added a powered USB hub to the back of the scanner. So if you would like to run some additional USB peripherals at the uh, teller line, you now have access to two more ports. They're certainly not going to be talking to the scanner. They're just going to be taking advantage of a, uh, a powered port that's conveniently located at the back of the scanner. Next slide. We also have an optional uh, MagStripe card reader that can be integrated into the scanner itself if you're looking for that functionality. Uh, we have convenient swing away doors on the scanner so that these are not removable covers that can be lost or broken. You have complete track access by just swinging these doors open in case you do need to get to that track. And finally, we mentioned it. There is a smart switch that's on this scanner. Um, you know, beyond just uh, turning on a cleaning mode, there are several functions that can be controlled by this switch that are independent of the image capture software platform. Next slide. Lou mentioned the thermal printing, and we certainly have a solution for that as well. This is uh, our thermal receipt printer. It is a, um, a custom fit in a housing that is uh, made to fit directly underneath the base of the TS-500 so that we're utilizing the same footprint of the scanner, but allowing two functions there with the printing and the uh, scanner itself. It has a shared power supply and USB cable. So you're only going to have one power cord and one USB cable coming out of this combination once you put them together. So that saves you a couple of outlets. It is a modular design, so it does not need to be ordered at the time you order the scanner. If you have printers that you'd like to use for another year or so, you could certainly order the printers separately down the road. They would simply come out of the box, you'd lift the scanner and place them under the scanner. So that's not something you have to order with the scanner, but you can. And uh, obviously, we touched on it, there's some inherent benefits to uh, thermal technology, mainly in the form of uh, ongoing consumable costs associated with other types of printing, you know, uh, uh, inkjet, toner, ribbons. Um, and if you want to move to the next slide, uh, Receiptware is a program that comes with these scanners that, uh, just as Lou described, allows you as the bank to design the receipt yourself. You don't need to pay a, a, a third-party company to design this for you. It allows you to put, there's several samples here, but it allows you to put uh, logos at the top, uh, a watermark, margin messages, and then also uh, marketing material at the bottom of it. Um, again, this is helping you turn that receipt into more of a, uh, a marketing tool, so not so much just a, you know, a record of the transaction, which is most likely what's happening now. Next slide. If you're looking for a just the scanning functionality at the teller line, maybe you already have peripherals that are going to perform some of the other functions we've described with the TS-500. We do have another solution. It's the TS-240. This was our fifth generation scanner, and it's not being replaced by the TS-500. TS they they complement each other. But this is, the functionality here is simply scanning. We do have a thermal receipt printer, as you see on the right there, that uh, is designed. It's modular as well. Same thermal engine that we've already talked about, just in a housing that's specific to the base of the TS-240 that's available for that. But again, if you're looking for a less costly solution and you just need the scanning functionality, we would invite you to uh, take a look at our TS-240 line of scanners. Next slide. And then just you know, some additional things to think about when you're thinking about um, moving to teller capture. Number one would be branch virtualization. Are, are, are you potentially going to move to a VMware or Citrix or virtualized environment down the road? Maybe you're already in that environment. You need a solution that addresses that today, whereby you need to have the scanners and the printers on the network itself and not tethered via a USB cable, and you're not going to have a PC there, maybe now or down the road. We have a solution for that in our, our secure link option. This would uh, allow you to operate in those types of environment. It can be 
purchased as a separate small module that sits behind or beside the scanner so that if you want to go ahead and move to a teller environment now, but you feel like down the road you may move into a virtualized environment, the scanner purchase is not a sunk cost. You can simply purchase secure link modules and uh, continue to enjoy your investment in the scanners themselves. Or if you prefer to have them built into the scanners, uh, that's something that uh, is down the road for us as well. Um, remote monitoring is another consideration if you want to be able to monitor the health of your scanner network. We have a solution for that in our advisor product, which would provide you with a dashboard and give you any number of uh, uh, reports on what's going on with your scanner network. And then finally, um, sort of the, the, the issue in, in the scanner industry or the image capture industry, there are known um, problem documents in the marketplace. These are the problem children, right? These are the, the money orders, some specific WIC checks, just documents that were designed by nature to be very hard to image. And if the scanner struggles with imaging those, we have a solution. We call it special document handling, whereby we can identify, we know what those documents are. We can identify them as they enter the scanner. We use very specific threshold settings that are uh, engineered for that document alone in order to optimize that and try to uh, minimize any exceptions that you're going to have uh, when you're scanning a, a, a stack of checks. Um, next slide. And uh, that's at a very high level what we wanted to share with you today. Uh, we certainly appreciate the time to do that. If you see anything that you'd like to have a more in-depth conversation about, we invite you to reach out to your Unilink rep and they can coordinate a conversation with us. We would be happy to do that. Thanks, Lou. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Now I would like to introduce everybody to Bob Laddick, who is the Business and Develop Business Development and Financial Markets at Canon. Bob? Yes. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. I'm assuming you can hear me fine. Um, so uh, we've uh, we've participated in these presentations and, and gatherings before, and have, and have found them to be quite informative and, and beneficial to all. So uh, thanks again for doing this, Lou and and uh, Unilink. Uh, looking at the next slide, uh, if you happen to participate in these events before, you may have heard me, and you may have seen a variation of this slide. So uh, for those of you who haven't, uh, watch and learn. So this is kind of in my DNA. Whenever I do a presentation like this, there's some, there's some things I like to talk about. It's kind of like the old high school superlatives uh, uh, in the yearbook. There's just some great things for me to be able to talk about uh, about Canon. Uh, in particular, our, uh, our, our headquarters is in Melville, New York. We just completed our new office building. It's been there for a couple of years, and it's a really cool place. And looking at the statistics here, note that Canon's annual worldwide sales are uh, in the neighborhood of $35 billion. And uh, also note that, you know, give or take, um, you know, actually I, I had updated that slide a little bit. Um, you know, 10, 10 or so percent, uh, 6 to 10 percent goes to uh, our R&D activities. So we're talking about billions of dollars being devoted to developing and bringing innovative and these best of breed products to market. So we're a company on the world scene and have a great and strong balance sheet. And these are just some nice things to be able to say. On the next slide, I would like to point that uh, for this discussion, you know, we're going to focus on check scanners. Everybody knows Canon for a lot of different things, uh, but today we're going to talk about check scanners. We have a full line of micro-enabled check transports, and they can be used from branch capture to high-end RDC. But the current product lineup consists of the CR50, the CR80, and the CR190-2. It's our latest model. Uh, so more specifically, the 50 and the 80 can be used for teller windows in conjunction with the receipt printer. Uh, we do also see the 190 in teller configurations for back counter, uh, for those high volume windows, for deposits, business deposits, uh, for instance. A lot of times you'll see a, a lane that, that's specific to business. So on the next slide, just kind of a, some general statements. Um, even though you may, may know us primarily for branch capture lockbox, we do have a very strong presence in the in the teller capture market. And you can see there's a lot of crossover 
in where our scanners sit. So for branch capture, for back counter, big bank, small banks, credit unions, teller capture, um, it, it's tough to pigeonhole our devices for one particular uh, for one particular market. Um, so there's there's just general broad appeal. So um, going on to the next slide, since we do want to particularly focus on teller capture, these are the two devices we're talking about uh, primarily: the CR50 and the CR80. A couple of things we hear from our customers, you know, what they like to say is they're compact, they're very easy to use. Employee training is very easy. So for the next slide, I would like to show you what our configuration would be with a thermal receipt printer. So when it comes to receipt printing, you can really use whichever printer you want. What we're showing here is a Star Micronics thermal device because, you know, there's this ni nice little nesting piece that they've uh, uh, engineered to fit between the scanner and, and the printer, so it fits very snugly together. Uh, but since there's no direct integration between the printer and the scanner, you can use whatever uh, you'd like. And uh, you could use printers from manufacturers that are on this call even. Um, on the next slide, I'd like to get into some of our key technologies about what makes Canon scanners uh, pretty unique in the marketplace, I think. So one statement that's really safe to say is that Canon knows images. So of all of the products in the Canon portfolio and the technologies that we, uh, that we utilize, they all somehow deal with images. So from cameras and fax machines and laser printers and ophthalmologic equipment and digital x-ray machines, uh, virtual technologies, just a lot of things that you might not even know that Canon does there's always something to do with an image. So of those billions of dollars that go into R&D, some of them do un end up into our check scanners. So what that really means to you is that the check that's captured with the CR device, one of our check scanners, um, that's processed by your tellers, branch capture software, it's going to be of really high quality. So further, the software that does the CARLAR and the image handling based on IQA, it's going to have a better chance of success when using a high quality image. So in other words, you know, the fewer rejects due to IQA issues. Um, and you know, Mike even touched on it. It's kind of a common thread through all of us. Uh, some examples would be WIC checks, uh, savings bond money orders, and these are just very notoriously difficult to capture images, uh, uh, to capture well. Uh, so our fine text filtering, uh, which is a standard out-of-the-box setting, handles these really, really well. So on the next page, or on the next slide, another key technology relates to the micro-reading. Um, that's a very important component of the check processing workflow. Uh, we have what's called a OCR assist. It's reading the microline magnetically and OCRing it. Uh, for very good accuracy and throughput to the application. Uh, previous generations of our scanners handled this very well. Uh, the algorithms and technologies uh, were quite good, but the newer versions are just, they're better simply due to evolution and the, uh, the improvements in that technology. So now we're combining the two, the OCR with the, uh, assist with the microdata. It's all done behind the scenes. You don't need to do any check boxes or anything. We work very closely with our ISVs, our uh, independent software vendors, to incorporate all of these features into the scanners. So the benefit here is fewer rejects due to micro misreads. Now on the next slide, this is really cool. Ease of use. You can see the two devices here. Um, it's a unique aspect of Canon that our heritage is in consumer-based products. So think about those cameras or multifunction printers. You might have some at home or in, in the workplace. So consumer devices are a little unique. They really need to be designed so that there's very little guesswork involved in figuring out how they work. So ease of use and ease of maintenance are um, really key to a positive user experience as well as the longevity of the device. So this is also true with check scanners. Uh, they were designed with a lot of these concepts in mind. So you can see the scanner paper path is extremely accessible. Uh, the CR190 on the left has one top cover that can be very easily remo uh, removed 
uh, for access to the scanner. Maybe you need to change the ink cartridge or uh, change the rollers. Uh, the CR80 on the right, uh, it, am, it only has two doors, a front door and back door that accesses the paper path. No covers to remove. But in both images, you can see that there's a bottom plate on each machine, and that prevents foreign matter like dust and pieces of checks, paper clips, and potato chips, and you know, there's all kinds of stuff in the work environment. It keeps all that stuff from getting into those uh, sensitive areas where the electronics and the motors res excuse me, reside. So this really is kind of key in maintaining high uptime for the machine. You know, we've got scanners that are generation one that are still out there in use from eight and nine years ago. So in my mind, that's a, that's a pretty good ROI uh, for those institutions. So on the next slide is just simply a recap. The scanners last a long time. There's very high uptime. They're just easy to use, low operating costs. Um, and, you know, these rollers are geared for half a million scans before they need replacing. And those are, well, the numbers we publish are very conservative. So you can get a real high uh, return on investment. Now, the last one, I like to say set it and forget it. Um, the last thing you want to have to do is have a high maintenance device that you have to keep checking in on. So set it and forget it. That's, that's kind of how I like to see our scanners. The next slide talks about our alliance partners. So what's also key for you to know is that Canon has a very strong relationships or maintains strong relationships with our software companies. We call them ISVs, independent software vendors, that drive our scanners. So there's just a small handful on this slide. There's 80 plus, and there's a lot more than that, really. Uh, but we realize a strong relationship with these companies is really core to successful implementation. So we spent a lot of time supporting them from a technology standpoint. Uh, standpoint. Uh, there's a lot of collaboration between, between Canon and our software partners. Uh, next slide, please. So we've heard about it. We talked about it, we go to conferences, and we hear all these things about branch transformation. There's a lot going on out there. Uh, financial is a very interesting market just because the pace of change is so fast. Uh, what's happening to brick and mortar, um, the universal teller concept, thin client support from PC-based uh, applications to, to uh, server-based applications. Are we going to Citrix or VMware? Uh, so there's a lot of things to consider. Uh, infrastructure-wise. Also, space is king. Uh, there's some numbers that I've heard that are a lot higher that uh, I'm just not comfortable stating. Uh, so let's just say even on the low end, an average of 11 peripheral devices per teleworkstation, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of clutter. So is there a way to combine all of these um, moving points here into a single device that uh, can do it all? Well, maybe not all of it, but uh, certainly a multi-function device with the USB hub that can do just all kinds of different things is something that is definitely on Canon's radar screen. Um, we may not be first to market, but when we come to market, it's a quality device. We have a strong heritage in financial. We have a great reputation in the marketplace. And we look forward to bringing our um, next generation teller capture device to market in the very near future. So what I can say uh, about that is please stay tuned. Now, the next slide, I think there might be one more. Um, yes, there is. You know, Lou talked, uh, Lou talked about the, um, the, the service um, that Unilink offers. We also offer service care packs, uh, exchange programs. So depending on you, uh, where the location is and, and uh, the particular situation, uh, know that Canon does support with the nationwide uh, support network uh, all of our devices that are that are out there in the field. Um, and with that, I believe I'm just about done. So thank you very much for your attention, and uh, as always, um, uh, we appreciate your support. Thank, thanks, Bob, uh, for your presentation. Uh, we now would like to invite Jeff Wood from Burroughs to uh, present. And good afternoon, uh, Lou, and uh, for those on the West Coast, uh, good morning to you, and thank you for joining us. We can go on to the next slide. 
Fantastic. Uh, so thank you, Lou, uh, and and your team for putting this on today, and uh, thank you everyone for uh, for joining us uh, for this presentation. It's greatly appreciated. One of the things that Lou had mentioned uh, earlier is that it's uh, always a good thing after a, a presentation like this is to to call his team and uh, set up another appointment and to start taking a look at your specific um, application and what you're trying to do. And uh, certainly we support uh, Unilink in that endeavor. So we'll go on to the next one. Uh, so we're, uh, we're uh, here, whoops. <laughs> We're here uh, in the United States, uh, based in uh, Plymouth, Michigan, just outside the Detroit airport. Uh, we also have our larger uh, facilities in uh, Portland, Oregon, Elmhurst, uh, Illinois, which is outside of O'Hare, and then another uh, lo uh, larger location in Houston. We have some other uh, smaller offices uh, around, for instance, in Denver and so on and so forth. So uh, there are basically two things that we do, boroughs, uh, checks, and cash uh, solutions. Uh, so we've been uh, in the business for a number of years now. Anyone uh, having been in, in the banking industry for a while have uh, probably seen seen our name and been introduced to us. Uh, some of the things that uh, we're known for is actually at the the beginning is the Micker, uh, the creation of the Micker line is to understand uh, where these checks are written and where they're going to. Uh, so we created that with NCR and IBM. Uh, so we have a number of patents uh, outstanding even today. And um, so uh, quality, quality. So we'll go to the next slide. And uh, so with that in mind, we uh, kind of have uh, diversified uh, the company over the years to be both product and services. And so if you're, uh, in t uh, you're dealing with uh, either checks or cash, uh, we can be of uh, service to you, but also the diversification is an important aspect uh, as the industry continues to change and consolidate. Uh, so with that, we'll go to the next slide. And uh, so here for those folks who have been in the banking industry for a while, you see a reader sorter, and that's not what we're going to talk about today, but why it's important to, to everyone on the line is that uh, Basically, what we've done is taken uh, technology from several years ago, and that um, machine there that's a, a reader sorter was actually getting uh, checks moving through its system at 17 miles an hour. So if you think of uh, riding down the road with a check hanging out the window in your car at 17 miles an hour, you have to keep it straight. You have to be able to uh, take a look at the maker line and then determine where it's going and handle that uh, thousands and thousands of times, millions of times a week. And so what we did is we took that technology, and that's basically the speed of a, a piece of paper can actually cut metal at that speed. So when you're looking for high quality things that are made uh, with a lot of precision, uh, you would be thinking of burrows. So we've took, taken that technology, We've gotten it uh, smaller and smaller in size. And for the next, uh, we're going to actually take a quick little look at a video. Um, and from what I understand, we, we're not able to uh, hook up the audio right here. But the concept here is for those looking into check scanners. Uh, the biggest issue uh, is to find one uh, that you're not going to have to deal with a whole lot. So the things that we have taken a look at uh, fast, compact, uh, and durable are the three areas that uh, each of our clients has looked at and said, these are the things, these are the attributes that we want you, Burroughs, to work on in creating your next generation scanners. So that uh, video, uh, actually kind of fun, um, but it's out on YouTube and we can share that link with you uh, as well. So we'll go on to the next slide. So one of the things, as we uh, showed you, that uh, big bulky uh, machine moving checks at 17 miles an hour, uh, we continue to look at that and what our, our customers are asking for, smaller, 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 however, handling more and more types of applications and types of paper, types of checks, and things like that. So we'll go on to the next slide. Uh, 
So for the Teller uh, workspace, um, on the left hand side, this picture is our last uh, generation, somewhat compatible or comparable that is with uh, some of the other folks uh, that are presenting today. What we've done is continue to uh, make that footprint even smaller, um, looking at that uh, workspace of the teller, making everything easy to use. <clears throat> and also um, able to be able to process you know, checks, uh, cards, both thin and thick, just uh, straight out of the box, uh, rebate coupons and what have you. So uh, the other thing that we continue to do is to take a look at the way uh, our customers are, are utilizing it and what are their hang-ups, either at the teller line or anywhere else. And we uh, have just recently increased the pocket capacity on the output because we saw it's anyone, anyone goes on vacation, right? You, you, you pack up nicely, everything fits into that suitcase, and then at the end of the vacation you say, how did this all, all uh, fit in there at the, uh, at the beginning? So when that check is going through and, and going to the output, you're adding a little bit of air, a little bit of uh, extra room. So what we've done is continue to increase that size of the output pocket so everything flows through really nice and easily. So we'll go to the next uh, slide, please. Uh, one of the things we've, we've got here um, in the high speed, you can uh, have a choice of either 155 documents per minute or 55 uh, documents per minute. So if you're handling <coughs> large commercial customers still at the teller line, uh, you can get through those uh, very, very uh, quickly. In terms of quiet, uh, we've had some, uh, we go through a lot of uh, bake-offs as everybody else does and, and people, large institutions and small alike. Uh, go through a process and they take a look at each manufacturer's and we had an example just recently where <clears throat> someone had set up a uh, sort of a fake teller line, if you will, for research um, and uh, testing out the scanners from each of the manufacturers and they told us afterwards, you know, some of the reasons why that uh, we won uh, and were implemented at the uh, financial institution is when you get a number of these things going at a time we are remarkably quiet versus the rest of, uh, of, the, of the field. So they appreciated the ability to get through uh, transactions really fast and really quietly. So we'll go to the next slide. Uh, the design, uh, one of the things that you find out at the teller line is that everyone does something that you think uh, they'll never do picking something up um, by, a, by a feeder or by the output pocket or something like that or one of the uh, hinged uh, covers or what have you. Everything is built very, very strong, uh, very durable uh, with burrows. So anyone can do any type of mistake here. You can pick it up by any of these areas and everything's going to work. A single um, process to get the check from the beginning to the end with two cameras front and back, uh, another Example of that is where you have uh, checks that are being um, perhaps uh, declined by the Fed because uh, the, the back of the check is reading completely differently than the front of the check. With the two uh, cameras, those can be um, uh, changed uh, and uh, worked on separately since there are two cameras and you can uh, go ahead and uh, uh, able to get that through the Fed or any other process uh, quite easily. Uh, so being able to handle that. And then the next slide will show you the uh, ID card scanner is available uh, also uh, as a standard. And basically, uh, if you have an ID, uh, a driver's license or something like that, you need to capture. Or if you had a different type of identification that you wanted to um, capture, if you uh, uh, need an ID card of some sort from the bank or what have you, you've got that. It's a nice clear path from the front to the back or the back to the front, depending on the particular model, and uh, handles that nicely. So we'll um, go to the next slide. Quality, quality, quality. So we've uh, talked about um, uh, the beginnings of starting with being able to capture uh, an image and a micker uh, at 17 miles an hour, um, paper handling being very important reliability, durability, 
all things that Burroughs prides itself on is the ability to basically get that installed uh, through Lose Group or what have you or, or uh, resources at the uh, financial institution and be able to go very easy to understand and to utilize. Uh, thank you. We'll go to the next one. So with the um, low operator maintenance, very important on the teller line <laughs> is to make it uh, easy for everyone to understand, but also very little for them to do. So um, what we've done is put a lot of work into, uh, especially the inkjet uh, felt pad, is to be able to capture any ink that might be left over once um, once the endorsement is finished and what have you. Uh, the consumables are long lasting. They actually tell you if you're, if you're low or uh, what have you through the ISV's um, software. And so it's nice open design uh, here as well, uh, very clear. And if you have anything uh, caught, uh, you can easily open these up and, and clean it out as well. But again, very uh, low in terms of operator maintenance. There isn't very much for anyone to do uh, other than get the teller transactions going through the system. So that's it. We'll go to the next one. So the uh, automatic feeder flag, it's uh, basically set up um, so as a teller is working on, uh, assist on a, a, a transaction, single handed, you can put that in, get the um, uh, check to flow on through there. There's a button right up in front, which everyone can see. Uh, it has uh, different indicators whether uh, the actual scanner is on or off. If there has been a jam of some sort, uh, perhaps uh, someone forgot to take that paper clip off of the uh, checks and uh, got uh, jammed up in there, or there's some other reason, holding that button down will open up the system, clear it out, uh, and allow that teller to start back and uh, re-enter that um, item uh, with very little um, intervention at all. So we'll nice right up at front rather than the back, so nice and easy for everyone to, to handle. So we'll go to the next one. And for the scanner that we've um, spoken about here too, uh, size, very, very important. We had uh, the last model that you, you saw in terms of the scanner, we had another printer that sat underneath it. As we came out with the Professional Elite smaller footprint, we also came out with the smaller printer. Uh, does all the um, APIs in terms of uh, being able to handle any of your softwares, whether you're Fiserv, Jack Henry, uh, Wausau, or what have you, and uh, no additional desktop space they click right on. Uh, again, very durable as well. Uh, you can basically pack these things around, push them around, uh, go without, uh, without any problems at all. So we'll go to the next slide. We're just about over here. So the, um, the thing uh, with our receipt now, uh, we have a very large uh, paper roll capacity. Um, it's basically pop it in there. Uh, it can uh, go ahead and print out your marketing messages, your logo, any cross-sell messages if you happen to have that type of thing uh, with your software provider that you can uh, push out there, similar to what you do at a grocery store. Uh, has all the different types of Windows fonts available, and you have the graphic and text uh, right around all the way through the um, the area of the uh, of the paper, the thermal paper there. So, uh, excellent, uh, nice package. Uh, we were with a uh, conference last week, and everyone just couldn't believe the size and the ruggedness of these two uh, put. Uh, right on top of each other. So very, very nice uh, combination. So we'll go to the next slide. And we're... So the big thing, why Burroughs? Uh, again, um, Lou and his team are going to walk you through step by step and, and validate that your, uh, your business requirements are met with whomever it is that you uh, decide upon, any of these, uh, any of the vendors. But why have people purchased from Burroughs in the past? Quality, quality, quality. We continue to work on the design, making it very, very easy 
for the end person, so that teller, uh, or in the uh, the new branch environment, that sort of uh, teller-less environment. So the uh, mobile uh, banker throughout the system is to be able to make it just as easy as possible. So you, people are not thinking about the scanner. They're thinking about how to interact with the customer and how to do their cross-sells, how to do the upselling, and what have you. So that's our focus, is to make sure that we're in the background, uh, something that you can just depend upon. We're going to bring you all the features as they become available uh, within your software. And in terms of the price, very big value uh, along with Lou and his team. So I think that's about it. And thank you very much. OK. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate your presentation. Next on the slate for us is Greg Richardson from Panini. Thank you, Greg. Look forward to your presentation. Hey, thank you, Lou. And, and I want to send a, a special thank you to Renee and Colleen as well for putting this on at Unilink. Uh, as as my, my friends and other manufacturers have indicated, Lou's team does a fantastic job from top to bottom. Uh, we're honored to consider them a very close partner uh, and more than that, friend. And uh, we appreciate being here, and I'm honored to be here with uh, Mike, Bob, Jeff, and Linda, who are all fantastic people. We all kind of chat at some of these trade shows and have a good time together, and uh, they're all fantastic people. So you're in good hands no matter what you choose. And I appreciate all the attendees for being on, on the line as well. So I'll try to bore you a little bit here with a little, uh, a little panini knowledge. Um, if you would go to the next slide for me, Renee. Um, we're going to take a little different approach uh, for, for our presentation. Uh, we could go into a lot of different products. You know, here at Panini, um, North American headquarters is based in Dayton, Ohio, is where I sit, stormy Dayton, Ohio, today and last night. Um, you know, we, we like to say, this is what we do. We've been doing check scanning for decades upon decades. We put all of our R&D in the things that we share with you. I'm going to share just a little bit with you today. Uh, we encourage you, like the other manufacturers have mentioned, we encourage you to engage with Lou and his team. Uh, give us a shot, you know, kick us around. I think you'll be happy with what you see. Today, uh, we want to talk about what we've heard from a lot of, of you folks, the financial institutions, about things that are important to you and what the little part that we're doing to try to help solve that. So we try to keep our finger on the pulse of the, of the banking and credit union industry as with our other vertical markets. And we really try to focus on what are your issues and how can we help you minimize those issues and most importantly save money and get on to the activities that make you the most money. So I'm going to outline it. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about all, one of our newer products. It's actually been out for three, four years. And, and you'll see it's really become the standard um, for, for high performance teller image capture. You would go to the next slide for me. So all financial institutions, I shouldn't say all, but a, a lot of them, as we talk to, the vast majority are, are having this issue where you know, there are fewer and fewer people coming into the branch. You know, and the return on the investment for you, the financial institution, has dropped. But on the other hand, customers still prefer that physical location, of that bank presence. I mean, I, as a customer of a bank myself, if I see my local branch or two shutting down with my financial institution, you know, there's a, even though I'm talking about this right now, there's a twinge of me that says, you know, oh, I, is that is that bank doing okay? You know, should I switch financial institutions? We often hear financial institutions use that as a point against others. They, hey, they've closed three branches in your town. You know, they must not be doing well. So we understand there's a dichotomy here. There's a pressure out there in the marketplace. So banks have to retain that physical presence, even though maybe sometimes the financial numbers don't add up. So how, how do we up that level of customer service for you and lower the total cost of operations? So you would go to the next slide. So you know, what, what we see is today, a snapshot of today, uh, low value manual transactions. Uh, tellers are consumed with mundane, simple tasks. There's a high operational cost. Next slide, please. Um, and we all, all, everybody we talk to kind of agrees, hey, there's this, there's this idealistic future state of automated low-value transactions and, and more of a, you know, we hear an Apple store model. And, uh, you know, there's this idealistic, you know, coffee shop going on where everybody's happy and, uh, you know, under 30. 
uh, lower operational costs, but you know there has to be there has to be a happy medium. There has to be a way to get from point A, 1985, to point B, you know, 2050. Next slide, please. And what that that bridge to getting there is all around this idea of technology. There's technology out there that we have um, discovered and built into our products that can help you take incremental steps to increase your productivity of your branch, to focus on being customer centric. And again, you know, maybe maybe it's not the idealistic Apple Store model, but there are there are small uh, integrated, you know, small incremental steps that you can do. You know, not to use too many business cliches, but what do they always say about eating an elephant, right? One one bite at a time. So the same kind of thing. Um, those incremental steps are ultimately what get you on that road to a transform branch or the quote unquote branch of the future. So next slide, please. So you know, if 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 any of you are out there, kind of nodding your head, saying, "Okay, yeah, I mean, kind of, we've been having discussions like that, or that sounds reasonable." You know, okay, now what, right? Well, Panini likes to offer us. Uh, we're here to help. Um, we can help you take those those small steps. Uh, we understand that check volumes in your particular branches. Some of them may actually be declining. Um, maybe those big back office machines aren't needed uh, like they were, um, and maybe there's a, a way, you know, to move those up to the all that all that up to the teller line with this whole idea of teller capture. Um, help you automate, uh, enable automation and efficiency, boost that ROI, and concentrate many different things into a small footprint device. So next slide, please. And then this is when you get the drum roll and the big aha that says, okay, this, one of our newer, and I say newer, it's probably been out for about three and a half, four years. So it's, it's experienced, it's proven, it's deployed, and it's certified, is our vision next. This is our next generation, like the play on the pun there, our next generation check scanner that builds off the legacy of the Vision X, which many of you know about. Um, we have over a million devices deployed worldwide, and we're the worldwide leader in this. So, and, and again, this is what we do. So we, we will stand up and, and put, a, put a flag in that and say we, we're very proud of our heritage and what we do. We put all of that into this Vision Next. And we like to say that the Vision Next covers the three main variables of teller image capture. The first one is about the document itself. As you run checks, money orders, uh, we, we all, uh, like some of my other friends have talked about, I mean, we all have similar issues in the types of documents and, and have trouble. Um, however, you know, we put, we put a lot of feature functionality to help us read that paper. When we have these bake-off type things, like Jeff mentioned, um, what, what, what's really funny is that each financial institution, and you, if you're listening, you may have this as well, uh, like a trick, you know, a trick batch that says, uh, you know, here comes Panini with our new latest and greatest scanner, and we've got these perfect checks, and we say, oh, look at how smoothly they run through the machine, until the operations guy comes in with about 150 checks that are torn and crumpled and all matched together. Say, ah, okay, let's wait and see how it does on this batch. That's where we excel. We love those trick batches. We love to put our scanner up against anybody else with those trick batches uh, because we feel it performs very well. So we address those variables in the document. In the development, or I guess I should say the training, um, you know, the teller position is a, can be a high turnover position in a financial institution. So that teller needs something easy to use. We need to get them focusing on more value-added services, upselling different products and services in the branch, and not spending a lot of time manipulating a check scanner. That's non-value added for that teller, whoever's doing that. So we address that with the Vision X. And then the environment, believe it or not, worldwide, altitudes, um, humidity, different things can affect quality of scanner, printer, paper. We have put that into the R&D that has gone into it as well. We truly try to think about everything. Next slide. And uh, so, 
you'll, you'll see the swing open covers. We'll talk just a, give me just a couple slides to go over a few of the bells and whistles of this particular one. Um, you know, you'll, you'll see the swing open covers. Again, things that have now become an industry standard originated with the Vision Next. And it's, it's fantastic because you can see there's such a benefit for training, for access, for, again, I'll, I'll beat that dead horse, to, to make sure that whoever is manipulating the check scanner just can do it in the most quickest time uh, and then get back to what's more value added. So from a speeds and feeds standpoint, this guy can go up to 160 documents per minute. So if you're not ready for teller image capture and you still want to do back office, we can greatly reduce the footprint, reduce the cost, but still not re uh, reduce the document per minute speed that much. So that's, it's a nice thing for today, and then you don't have to get a new device when you're ready to implement teller capture. Uh, part of the way it minimizes time is to eliminate double feeds with uh, ultrasonic double feed detection. Uh, as you guys probably know, double feed when a couple checks and you know, piggybacks stick onto each other, uh, technology built in to help prevent that. And, and, and I, will, I will echo a lot of what you have already heard, that the teller space is small especially as you try to evolve into what it looks like in the future, you want to be very um, uh, very careful, very protective of that space. And we agree. We don't want you to have to have multiple devices you know, stacked here and there and everywhere. We want to eliminate devices so you have a single thing on the teller station that is easy to use. Part of that is eliminate this thing called a check scanner. We think a check, or a, excuse me, a check jogger. We think a check jogger is so outdated, and we've built in patented technology into the Vision Next that pulls the check vertically and horizontally into the track and helps it read, eliminating the need for a check jogger. So if you have one of those, I mean, instant savings there, instant space and money savings. Get that out of there. Um, this thing called an exception pocket that we designed to help sort out foreign documents. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And then it, I'll hit it again, that just the easy routine cover that you know, even somebody as mundane as myself can, can open it, shut it, access the paper clips, the staples, everything else. Next slide. So a few of the a few of the really key features we hear from financial institutions like yourselves that they really like. And again, things that we put into the Vision X and really things that we put into all of our scanners. Um, it's not just uh, some guys cooking it up in a lab. We, we do a lot of market research. We do a lot of talking with current customers. And quite frankly, as Lou will tell you, we do a ton of talking with our partners. Um, a lot of what we developed comes from feedback and Lou will attest directly from Lou. Uh, so I mean, we, we take our partnerships and our customer relationships very seriously. And if they say, hey, you know, we have this need, we have this business issue, we're going to look for a way to resolve it. The things that you see that we're talking about here that have become the industry standard, they're based on feedback from folks like yourselves and like Lou. ID card scanning is one of them. Um, there's no need for additional hardware. It's built into the front of the device uh, very nicely, very ergonomic how it fits. Um, up to 14 line rich endorsement uh, with thanks to our advanced graphic printer. You can do lines, logos, all that kind of stuff on the back of the check. And then a built-in receipt printer. Uh, we've integrated receipt printing through cut sheet receipts into the check scanner itself. So when your teller is running the batch of checks, it's time for a receipt. They take a cut sheet, they enter it into the device, it goes back and forth very quickly, and then spits out the receipt either in the exit, exit pocket or in the um, foreign item rejection exception pocket. Either way, it can be configured. And so the teller can then just hand the receipt, the cut sheet clip, the receipt to the customer and go on about their day. Again, small footprint, multi multi multiple functions in one little device. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the exception pocket, which is a really neat, neat thing that we developed that can be, can be written multiple ways depending on who your software uh, vendor is. Uh, basically, foreign checks, upside down items, any other exception that you want to have programmed in there can come out that little exception pocket you see on the picture with the arrow. Uh, what it'll do, a lot, of, a lot of financial institutions will have the batch stop when the 
exit pocket is enabled with an upside down or a foreign item. So the teller immediately knows, hey, whoop, something's going on. I need to stop, correct it, get it out of there, reset it, and away we go. As opposed to running a, a batch and then figuring out, you know, item 64 out of 150 was upside down or was a, you know, French uh, franc, right? So something, it, it, it is very intuitive, and again, it goes to help the teller do their day-to-day -day and get back to what is more value added. Next slide, please. This is a little bit more of the detail about the AGP14 capability, the advanced graphic printing. Just kind of gives them a little graphic, uh, three different zones where things can be printed on a receipt or the back of a check. The full access to all fonts, graphics. Um, it, like I said, it leverages the exception pocket uh, for documents like the cashier's check or customer receipts. And you can also have that not only in 14 line if that's too much. You can do four lines or a single line as well. Next slide. So what are your takeaways here? Uh, what I would like for you to remember as you walk away. One, this is what Panini does, right? Panini check scanning, they go hand in hand. But specific to this uh, presentation, the three things I'd like you to take away. One, we can offer affordable steps towards whatever your version of a paperless branch of the future is, okay? Whatever your idealistic state is, and you say, I, I don't know if I can get there. Step one is Panini can help. The second thing is that we have devices, Vision Next I showed you today, but we have a lot of devices that are loaded with technology, able to handle all the common challenges that tellers face on a daily basis. And then third, we can handle multiple functions with a limited footprint, get rid of the clutter, get rid of the extra devices, and help uh, simplify the life of your branch. So with that, I will wrap up. I will say again, thank you so much. Willing to answer any of your questions. Please utilize Lou and his team to kick around a Panini item. Uh, check it out. We fully support them. And we look forward to working with each of you in the uh, coming days and weeks and months. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Greg. We really appreciate your presentation. Next up is Linda Fitzpatrick from Epson. Thank you, Lou, and it is now officially afternoon in California. So um, Lou and Renee and Colleen, thank you for putting the uh, webinar together, and thank you all um, for those that are still on the line. I know that an hour is a long time, and uh, hopefully we're saving the best for last. So um, with that said, as, as Lou shared with you all, uh, Unilink is a longtime um, uh, partner of Epson, and um, we are just uh, delighted to have them as, as, one, of our, as one of our partners. And um, as everyone else has shared, please be certain to utilize um, Lou and his team for their professional expertise that they have to offer to you. Uh, next slide, please. So when you think of Epson, you probably think of printing and you probably think of imaging. Um, I just wanted to put one slide up there about the Epson uh, product line in general. Um, just so you, uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of background, uh, Seiko is our parent company. So if anybody on the line is wearing a Seiko watch today, that is our uh, Seiko, um, uh, Seiko is our parent company. And of course, they are based in Japan. Uh, Epson America is based in Long Beach. We have about $10 billion in sales. Uh, we're in about 116 different countries, and we have uh, about 73,000 employees with uh, over 1,500 different patent solutions. So these are just some of the products that we offer out in the marketplace today that many customers are benefiting from our solutions, just starting with interactive projectors with over 10 billion children utilizing our bright links in school systems, all the way down to the bottom right of our point of sale service solutions where we have over 6 million of our thermal receipt printers in the marketplace today. So definitely depth and breadth and, uh, uh, and experience in imaging and, and print and other technologies. Uh, next slide, please. So we're here today to talk about uh, Teller Capture, and our focus is on imaging and print solutions to be able to offer for you to um, for you to be able to have at your branch locations. Um, there should be a picture up there. I don't know where it is. Maybe hit the other slide, Renee. 
Um, but over 72% of financial institutions in North America have an Epson image or print solution in the branch. That's a huge footprint um, you know, to be able to, to have in the marketplace today. Next slide, please. No matter what opportunity or what, what you, we miss one. I'm gonna go back. There you go. Thanks. So no matter what opportunity um, or what uh, problem you're trying to solve within your branch location, when you look at an overview or a snapshot of just some of the Epson products that we offer in the marketplace today, um, this slide provides a, a real good overview of just some of the products from payments to banking to credit unions to receipts to checks to imaging to scanners and printers. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to cover all of the feature functionalities of these products today, but I just want to make you aware that there are many other products out, in, uh, out that Epson offers in the marketplace today that may be a good solution for you to consider. But the one that we're going to talk about today, next slide please, Renee. It's the Epson uh, TMS uh, S9000 and 2000. I just love that slide. So the S9000 is the only all-in-one device that is out in the marketplace today. Um, it is not a stackable. It is an all-in-one, and it does uh, imaging. And I'm going to I'm going to give you an overview of the product. But it does uh, check scanning. It has an inkjet printer built into it, and a thermal receipt printer, along with other feature functionalities uh, that we will discuss. Next slide, please. So this just gives you another um, snapshot of the two products. You see the S9000. It has the T88 thermal receipt printer built into it. And next to it is our TMS2000, which is the exact same product as the S9000, but it does not have the Epson thermal receipt printer built into it. So I'm going to review the feature functionalities of the S9000 coming up on the next slide, but I just want to um, share with you to keep in mind that um, our stackable solution um, that I'm going to show you in the S S2000 that could stand alone has the exact same feature functionalities as the S9000. So next slide, please. So the F9000, um, as I shared with you, is truly the only uh, all-in-one device. Um, we have the industry-leading thermal receipt printer built into it, um, the T885, which as I shared with you, we have almost 6 million deployed out in the marketplace today and prints at about 11.6 inches per second. Um, we offer two-sided color ID scanning, and if you look to the upper left side up there on the image, you'll see the driver's license or, um, or uh, identification scanning. Um, it is done at 600 DPI, which is the only solution that can image at 600 DPI, and that will be critical as you um, talk to other software um, ID imaging companies if that's a feature functionality that you want to incorporate at the teller line. Um, just make a note on that 600 DPI, and I'll come back to that a little bit later. We can offer up to 16 lines of printed endorsement through our um, inkjet. Um, that is a two-inch high print area. So depending upon the font size that you want to use, um, you know, you can print something a little bit larger um, or you can make it a little bit smaller, but keep in mind you have a two-inch high print area, and that can be a combination of graphic and or text. So that's good for your um, endorsement in the back of the checks, and also if you wanted to use some cut sheet receipt printing. Again, you have a two-inch high print area, uh, and that is also accomplished by one pass. You don't have to double pass that to get the multiple lines. Um, we have the highest MICR accuracy available, and um, we publish that MICR accuracy. If you look at our documentation, um, Epson clearly states it is 99.9% .9 MICR accuracy. It doesn't say up to 97% or up to 99%. It states 99.9% .9 MICR accuracy. Um, we have the, the, the smallest footprint and it's really, the, again, the only footprint that truly has an integrated device with thermal receipt and inkjet printing and the other feature functionalities of the S9000. 
It has the fastest check scanning speed. We have 200 documents per minute and 100 documents per minute that we can offer um, as a solution to you. Um, the feed device can hold up to 100 documents. It has a um, three-track MagStripe reader. So if you look to the right of the S9000, that's an optional feature that you can um, have included on the uh, S9000 or the 2000. And that will allow you to card swipe and read tracks one, two, and three off of the card. Um, and then, as I shared with you, we have inkjet printing for uh, cashier, uh, inkjet printer built into it as well. And you can also print cashier checks um, from the, uh, the inkjet printer. So all in all, this, uh, the S9000 will do just about everything except make you a cup of coffee in the morning. Um, so there's more feature functionalities um, when you get into the technology of the product. Um, our, my, uh, my wonderful and, and friend competitors have talked to you a lot about those. We all kind of basically do the same thing, but there's other, but there's specific feature functionalities that I think we all do um, better and we have uniquenesses. And this particular product, um, the S9000, is truly the, a, a unique product in the marketplace. Uh, next slide, please. So here's what I call our Me Too product. So this is our stackable solution. So we came out with the S9000 oh, over four years ago. And um, based on the, the real estate um, that's available out on the, on the, you know, at the teller line um, you know, by your tellers, we certainly understand that that space is limited. And we had some um, customers come to us and say, hey, we like the S9000, but we really would like something a little bit narrower. You know, can you help us with that and not compromise, you know, the other great features that, that, that we found in the, in, you know, in the S9000. So we have the S2000, which as I shared with you earlier, has the exact same feature functionalities as the S9000, but the thermal receipt printer is now a stackable. So we have, of course, Epson's in the printing business, and you saw an example of the many different types of printers that we offer. And to lose point, we don't offer the 375, that old clunky printer, any longer. That's end of life. So you know, these are definitely some solutions that you want to consider to bring to the uh, to teller capture front counter. Um, so in this particular example, this is our uh, T72. It is a front-loading printer. Um, all of our products are designed and uh, manufactured. Um, by Epson, we don't outsource any of any of our you know um, uh, product lines, and you know and you have the confidence to know that the quality of our products, from imaging to print, and all of the other products that Epson offers, is is controlled and designed by uh, by Epson. Um, so the T72 printer is a front loading printer. It's sitting on a nice little stand. If you um, are even uh, more limited for real estate where that is still a little too much for you to have on your counter, that T70 can be mounted. So we can uh, mount the T70 underneath the counter, um, and then that just allows you just to have the S2000 sitting up there on the counter for a thermal receipt. So in all of our solutions, you have the opportunity to do your you know, inkjet um, endorsements. You can do cut sheet receipt printing. You can do your deposit uh, slips using images. Um, and or text. Um, you've got thermal receipt printing. You've got cashier printing. Um, so as I shared with you, there's, there's a lot of feature functionalities that's uh, built into our um, solutions. Regarding uh, document handling, we use what we call an ultrasonic um, technology. So we don't have any joggers that you have to worry about. Um, you, don't, you don't even have to have the checks perfectly aligned when, they, when they're put into the hopper. Um, our technology um, is the Add the checks. We'll will put them in a nice uh, clean format for the checks to pass through. Um, we also can read hard to read items. You know whether it is a money order or a dark item. Um, when we image the check, um, a, a fancy word that we like to use is called the binarization process. Which if you've got a lot of checks and the you know the, um, there's that they've got babies on them or pigs flying or they've you know they've got a logo on it. We uh, degrade the image, you know, that noise, if you will, that's on the check, and that is limited so we can read the key components of the, of the check, and that all basically happens within our processing. 
So I don't want to go into any more detail about our technology. That just kind of gives you an overview. Um, this particular, these particular products come with a one pocket um, or a two pocket. If you wanted to have an exception pocket, that's an option. They also come standard with one USB port, and you can also get a second USB port. Um, and um, let's see. I think that's all that I want to say on that, so I don't run out of time. Next slide, please, Renee. I hope everybody's still there. It's almost over. Um, so a couple of the, uh, the differentiators that I just wanted to highlight, there's many more, but one I wanted to touch on our ink technology. And um, the, the, the ink technology is our micro piazzo ink technology. And what this means to you, that means that Epson has a patent, um, Epson has a patent uh, technology called micro piazzo. And it allows the ink to dry immediately upon contact with the paper. And the benefit to you is, as you're printing and as you, and as you are utilizing our print technologies, you don't have to worry about ink smearing. You don't have to worry about cluttering, cluttering up your, you know, the, your, the, the product because the ink is automatically dried. And you can, um, you know, as you go through some demos and test this out, you can test it out itself. But unlike some of our um, some of the other um, solutions that are out in the marketplace today, we truly are the only one that has this patent ink technology. So we're never worried about ink smearing or or having debris um, from ink within our devices. Um, on the 600 DPI read, again, if you're considering the driver's license piece, um, in order to get a clear read, you really need 600 DPI. Um, we're certified with several different driver's license, if you will, software providers out in the marketplace today. And I've had all three of them come back to me and say we are truly the only one that do that provides a true 600 DPI read. So just make a note of that if you're looking for the driver's license uh, component of it. And lastly, our paper savings mode. Within our print technology, we are the only ones that have um, what we call a paper savings mode where you can, where we eliminate the white space on the printer when you go to uh, print out a receipt without degrading the font size uh, or the logo or the image as you can see. And this benefit to you is paper savings and of course cost associated with that. So those are just three um, differences that I wanted to highlight, highlight um, based on time constraints. Of course, there's many more. Uh, next slide, please. So we have software functionality within our API. Um, and I wanted to share with you that um, our product is certified on uh, all the major software providers and many non, you know, uh, what we call kind of non-major software providers out in the marketplace today. And um, what's important here is these, this is an example of some of the, um, the, the software functionality that is built within our API that you have access to. And we can work with you to um, monitor um, the examples that are up here as far as if you wanted to monitor the number of ink scans with, you know, the um, images with the checks. So that way you could set a, um, a time to say at every 1,000 passes, I want to I wanna notify this location to go ahead and you know, send a, a waffle card or a cleaning card through, through the product. Um, all the way down to knowing how many um, you know, number of line feeds that you did for validation, all the way to number of line feeds that you did from the roll paper. So this is just an example of some of the software functionality. And it can, um, it's cumulative, and it can also be reset. So it's kind of, it's kind of like an odometer um, on your car, where it stays cumulative. And then you have the trip odometer. So you can just kind of reset that for the trip um, and, and keep track of some of, these, um, some of the, the features of the software. Um, this, it's key to know that this is no, no cost to um, any, anybody that utilizes um, our product solution within our API. And we have other uh, feature functionalities from the software that you can use and we can provide to you for monitoring the product. And again, this is all offered at no cost. Uh, next slide, please. So just kind of in closing, um, next slide please. 
just talking a little bit about the branch of the future. And as we all have shared, Lou and his team are just wonderful consultants about um, just the financial marketplace. And um, he definitely has a wonderful staff that, that has a wealth of knowledge and experience about um, you know, not only teller, teller capture, but all aspects of, of the financial um, you know, the financial workflow, if you will, within an institution. So this is just some of the um, questions that we like to um, talk to you about, and I know Lou and his team like to talk to you about to kind of learn more about what your needs are to help you make an informed decision about what you're doing. Um, today you heard a lot of great information from Digital Chat, Cannon, Burroughs, Panini, and of course Edson here. And you know, our job, at least from my standpoint, I want you to make an informed decision. So please reach out, ask questions, um, do comparison, make an informed decision, put us all side by side, and um, and then, you know, then based on what your needs are and, and what solution you want to put in your, in your uh, location will definitely be um, very, very visible to you. Um, so next slide, please. So again, just kind of depending upon what your branch of the future looks like or what your branches look like today, um, Epson has a solution to be able to, to, to provide to you, whether it's, whether it's an imaging solution or a print solution or the other technologies that we briefly talked about. Um, Epson definitely has um, an opportunity to work with you and your um, uh, organization. So next slide, please, in closing. I hope that I have provided you a very brief overview of Epson and some of the products that we offer in the marketplace today, in particular to the financial telecapture um, environment. And I hope that uh, you all have a number of takeaways to help you make uh, a better and informed decision. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, Lou and um, uh, Renee and Colleen, thank you again for putting this all together. And you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, Thanks Linda. So that concludes our presenters for today. Um, at this point, we are going to answer some questions. So if you have any, you can please type them into your chat box now. Uh, Lou is going to answer a few of them. And the ones that we don't get to, we will contact you directly with the PDF of the questions and the answers. And also, we are recording this webinar. And it will be posted on our website when it's finalized. Uh, so now, yep. So now I will pass the presentation over to Lou. And while he is gathering the questions, um, we will be figuring out who is the lucky winner of our gift card. Thanks, Colleen. And Linda, thank you very much for your presentation. I've got a number of great questions here. Uh, we'll cover some of them here real quickly. First question, um, if I request evaluation equipment from Unilink, is there a charge for doing so? There's never a charge for evaluation equipment from Unilink. We pay for the shipping also to and from your locations. Um, all of the cost associated uh, with the equipment is on Unilink. Also during the process, we assist you in any of the technical support areas that uh, you have questions on or need help or assistance on. So it's very normal for us to work with you on things like customized print messages on your thermal paper or questions relating to software as it relates to the hardware vendors. Next question, great question. If I purchase our equipment, from Unilink, will I get the proper support from my software company that I purchased the software from? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I'm confident that every uh, financial institution that's on this webinar today, we are doing business with another with another financial institution uh, that is going, or rather, has the same telecapture software that you're going to consider or are going to be implementing. So we are a trusted vendor for customers, for instance, that are using Jack Henry as a solution, or Fiserv, uh, or FIS, or the other numerous software companies out there. As a matter of fact, when we've talked talk to financial institutions that have purchased their hardware from software companies, we're constantly hearing the comment, I wish we had gotten a hold of you and had purchased the hardware from you before we purchased it from the software company? So that's a great question. Another question is, do we need to purchase our maintenance programs from the, hard, from the manufacturers, as one of the manufacturers mentioned they offered EPACs? 
Absolutely not. If you feel like uh, the soft, or rather the maintenance solution is the, is the best option from the manufacturer, we provide the manufacturer's hardware solution as part of our solution for those scenarios. And every single hardware vendor that was on the presentation today, we have supported and uh, marketed their maintenance solution as part of our package if it's required. Another question. Do we have to install uh, the brand scanners and the thermal printers in all of our locations if we make the decision? Absolutely not. Uh, we've, we've experienced uh, situations, especially recently, uh, especially if you're beta testing, where you start off by installing the solution in a couple of branches, maybe highly visible branches or more experienced branches. Then we also have experienced situations where customers are installing the front counter check scanners now, keeping the receipt printers for a bit, and then installing the thermal printers at a later date. We're also experiencing situations now where customers are just in, uh, choosing the thermal printer uh, solution on the front counter uh, for the front counter solution. We've got numerous other questions that we're going to answer in a format afterwards, uh, but I wanted to thank you very much for your time today. As you're, as you're thinking about front counter capture, I'll leave you with these thoughts. If you're thinking about toller capture, but you're not sure if you can cost justify it, reach out to Unilink to get some white papers. Reach out to Unilink to be introduced to your peers who have decided to go with front counter capture and they can share stories with you in terms of uh, how they installed it, why they installed it, and the benefits that are, uh, they're getting from it. If you're committed to doing front counter capture, but you're not sure how to test it, you're not sure how to train for it, you're not sure how to implement it, reach out to Unilink because between our industry standard experience and us putting you touch, in touch with your peers that have already installed it, they have conversations we can ease any concerns that you have and be of assistance and guide you through the process. After the equipment is installed, Unilink will be your trusted partner to assist you in servicing the equipment on an ongoing basis with any number of service programs combined with consumable parts and supplies. One of the things that was touched on today was the brick and mortar locations it appears that they're going to be a thing of the past going forward for many of the financial institutions. One of the many reasons why uh, financial institutions lean on Unilink uh, as their trusted business partner is because not only can we uh, work with you to assist you on a great fund counter capture product, but we could also work with you on many other technologies uh, such as document uh, applications, new account openings, signature cards, things like that, signature pads, photo ID scanners, and cash recyclers. The branch of the future is the branch of the present, and Unilink has the skill set to assist and work with you in all endeavors. We want to thank you very much for your attendance today, and Colleen is going to announce to you the winner of the drawing. Thanks, Lou. So at this point, I would like to say congratulations to Dee Dee Pape. You are the lucky winner of our Unilink webinar giveaway you'll be receiving a $20 Dunkin' Donuts gift card. We will contact you directly and let you know how you can get your card. And that concludes our webinar for today. Again, thank you everyone for taking the time to join us today. If you have any further questions, you can visit our website at www.unilinkinc.com or you can reach us by phone at 800-666-2980 or you can also email us at sales at unilink.com. Have a great remainder of the week and have a happy summer.